<laughs> Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to San Diego, and welcome to our 39th annual users meeting. Do you like this new phrase? See what others count? <laughs> good. That's good because the purpose of this phrase is to describe the very special things that you do for your organizations. You are opening up eyes to what others can't. And this is one of the big themes of this conference, as you'll find out. The purpose of this meeting is pretty much exactly like the very first meeting that we had with our users. This was held in a little Montessori school. There were 11 people that came to our campus, and uh, we talked about the same things. We talked about getting together and sharing and learning from each other, getting a kind of sense of, of what's going on with the field, uh, drilling in on the technology, which at that time was not very good, <laughs> and our users told us so. I mean, it was a miserable meeting, actually. The most <laughs> fright <laughs> Not like this meeting, it's not at all the same. So in this meeting, we intend to accomplish some major things inspire you to do your work even better. And that inspiration will come from some of it from the technology, but more importantly, from your sharing of each other, the sort of sense of the world that you each have. This, this group is a special room. It has members from virtually every discipline, people that come from every walk of life, as they say, different cultures, different experiences. And the richness that we can give each other is about contributing your real experience and your thoughts and your visions for making the world a better place. Now, we always start this meeting, as some of you know, by standing up and turning around and meeting one new person. So can you do that for me now? Can we have the lights on? and? Uh, have a look. By now, you already have a little sense of who you are with, people that are not exactly from your field, but are using common technology, talking about the same thing, using similar methods, making the world a better place. Now, each year, I spend a month or so going through and preparing for this talk, and a major piece of that is getting information from you about your work. You send me thousands of slides, which are little stories that give me some sense of what it is that you're doing. So it's an overwhelming month for me, and I have the privilege to share some of your work here for a couple of minutes. Some of you are working on environmental modeling and environmental assessment. For example, Conservation International looking at ocean health for the planet. Others looking at deforestation in Brazil or small things like noise pollution in Prague, or oil spills, looking at biodiversity, and we'll see that as a common theme throughout the day. Others are working on managing natural resources, and these are forests and agriculture, they are minerals. You are supporting, helping see what others can't in a major way to better manage in more sustainable ways our world. Others are managing fundamental land information, parcels, parcels about land ownership, the foundation for our civil society in various countries. But now we're seeing GIS move into the oceans to become more responsible with marine catastrophes. And look at this interesting map over in the lower right. This is Singapore, which once again is 
is pushing open a new frontier, underground cadaster and underground GIS. These examples show the work, your work in urban planning and regional planning, not only making cities more efficient, but also consistent with respect to land uses. And here your analytics in various forms are helping understand and therefore plan a more efficient city. My favorite here is trail planning over in the lower right, going on here with the rails to trails movement. I like these maps because they show in 3D GIS inside of buildings and city modeling. And my favorite here is in the lower left. It's putting in a brand new proposed building into an urban setting and letting public see what it's going to look like, a kind of democratization and engagement exercise in the planning cycle. In transportation, GIS, you are now managing the major ports around the world, actually the biggest ones, places like Rotterdam, and all the major airports like Atlanta, Schiphol, Los Angeles, are now more efficient because of it. And of course, roads and transit and even bike sharing. But my favorite on this one is in Germany and Bavaria, where they've developed AI-based machine learning tools to predict where road maintenance should go on. Just amazing work. Engineering, the field of engineering, both in the private sector and the public sector, is waking up to the power of what GIS can deliver in terms of making cities more efficient. And here, once again, we see in the Bay Area the application of AI for predicting water breaks and look at the one on the lower left, code enforcement, making our cities more accountable, more effective. In the utility space and telecommunications, we see it being used for asset management and for, in a way, seeing again what others can't in the way of Wi-Fi planning or 5G planning, looking at the three-dimensional data models that you have built to be more efficient in the design and planning. Uh, in the lower right, here's my favorite. It's looking at solar energy generation going on, the future in our power, in our power generation work. Here on the frontiers, many of you here in this room, in the application of GIS for business, being more effective at avoiding hazards, minimizing risk for insurance organizations locating stores in the right place. All the major retailers now are using this as a foundation to, and they see what their competitors can't. It's very, very interesting to me, this evolution of the technology in the private sector, automating and optimizing supply chains, and it goes on and on. In the world of statistics agencies, demographics and public health, miracles are happening. We're seeing what we have never been able to see before. And new things are happening, like in the Philippines, where using Survey 123, they're actually carrying on the live census, tabulating at the same time they're recording the census. And I'm particularly fond of this map in the lower, in the bottom lower, the pink one, that shows dashboards being used to support point-in-time counts. Now, those of you who are not from the U.S. Uh, may or may not know that we have a homeless problem here in our country. And in city after city, county after county, this kind of real-time measurement is helping us better target and support this very painful issue in our society today. Cities regions are becoming safer because we can now understand patterns of crime. What started in New York City several decades ago of crime stat is now prolific across the nation. This black example here in Jacksonville, that slide, is now commonplace. We're seeing in real time statistics reported effectively. 
And look at the one in the lower left. This is spatial temporal analytics in Sri Lanka. Well, we had a couple earthquakes here early in the week. Don't worry, it's not going to happen. It's really not. <laughs> I, have, I see what others can't. It's, I, I really. <laughs> it's not. But many of you are active in preparing for and responding to these disasters, like wildfire here in the West. It's become commonplace. It's like the fire season. And in Japan, impacted recently by severe weather, heavy, intense rainfall last year has now again, once again, repeated itself last week. Of course, going through all these maps, it's really a treasure. My colleague and I, Damien Spangrud, just enjoy it. And we pluck out a few maps that personally just interest us. These are beautiful renditions of topography and tourist maps. Interesting political maps showing elections in France or registered voters. And look at the one on the left here showing Mars geomorphology, kind of a macro world outside of this world. But then also look at the DNA mapping work. And I suppose most of you have now noticed the one on population diversity using the Lego inspired work there in Kentucky. I don't know what those guys are doing, but it's kind of fun. <laughs> Portals, and some of you know this, actually most of you know this, are coming alive in the GIS community. They're opening up data for the public to see. And there's many of these, hundreds, actually thousands of portals that are now sharing open data across the world. Last year, oh, sorry, this year, the Department of Homeland Security Heifeld program opened up all of its data and just received the FGDC Doug Niebert Award for doing so. It's an amazing event in our federal government. And there's mapping portals. There's citizen engagement portals for connecting and getting feedback. There's enterprise portals, and the one here I'd like to call your attention to is the UN's SDG portal, which is phenomenal. It's taking the data from the statistics organizations around the world and pouring it into a portal of portals for reporting the global sustainability goals. Some of the first evidence that the vision of this conference of building a geospatial nervous system for the planet can be done. Collaboration, partnerships, visualization, seeing these patterns holistically. This is a really interesting piece of effort. 